All right, guys, welcome back. Um, basically, I just got a quick video that I wanted to do on, as you can see behind me, and probably the title of this video will be balancing the system. Now, with this, I come across this a lot, um, especially in the, the job that I do. So you'll turn up to Mrs. Jones' house and she'll say to you, oh, we've got this radio out at the back, it's never working, or it's very, very, you know, it takes forever to come on and whatnot. Sometimes it'll come on, sometimes it won't, etc. all this sort of stuff. Right, the first first thing to do that I always do is I go and check, make sure that the TRV is, the spring is moving, um, and then I'll check the lock shield, obviously, make sure that that's open as well. And then once I know that they're both okay, I can kind of eliminate them to a certain point from from my mind, and then I can start looking at other, other reasons for it. Is the pump um, not faulty? Is it weak? You know, not able to um, do that. What I would tend to find is, um, is down to balancing or if someone's got a, they've had an extension done or they've had, um, you know, a, a conservatory on the back and they've had a radiator put in there. Might be the last one on the, the system. It's been teed off incorrectly or, you know, just, just teed off and it's not been balanced properly afterwards. Uh, so then, you know, I've had it you know, twice today, for instance, where I've had to balance the system. So it takes a little bit of time and I just wanted to run through the process of what I what I tend to do. So if I'm going to be balancing a system, 99% of the time it's going to be um, from an open vent system. Uh, sealed systems don't really seem to suffer with this too badly. Um, combi systems very, very rarely. Um, and then, yeah, so it'll be an open vent system. That will be when you, you would be looking at it. So obviously on here, I've just drawn it very, very quickly. But we've got the flow out to each radiator and I'll put a drop down here to show um, the extension radiator, for instance, in this in this uh, scenario. Um, and then we've got the return. Now, what, you're, what you'll find is it's been teed off. It will run down the wall uh, usually, or it could be under the floor. For instance, like the one today, it was actually under the floor, but I could actually see where it had been teed off from. Um, so what I did was I asked the customer, you know, which of the ones that are that heats up the most or the quickest, etc. And he said, oh, it's always the ones upstairs. Right, okay. First thing I went straight upstairs, isolated all the radiators upstairs on the on the lock shield side, um, just shut them down um, and then went back downstairs again. And then I turned all the ones downstairs off as well. And then I managed to get all the heat. So it's only got one place it can go. It can only go and service this radiator. So it's all gonna work there. Um, once that starts, once it gets to a good temperature, then I can start working my way back. So then what I'll do is I'll go to probably the next one along and I'll start opening up the TRV, uh, sorry, not the TRV, the lock shield side. I'll probably do that maybe half a turn um, and then I'll go, I'll do the ones downstairs half a turn. Then I'll go back upstairs, do all them half a turn as well. Wait for them to start heating up, see what the temperature is like. And then I'll just gauge it after that to what I'm going to do next. So then after after that, I'll probably go back again. So every you know, I was there a good half an hour, 40 minutes trying to set this system up. But afterwards, it was absolutely piping hot. Um, and he was saying, you know, it was the best it had been, you know, that he's noticed. So it goes to show that spending a little bit of time will help. So I've just, that's what I'll do. So I'll go to, go to each one, open it up half a turn. Then the ones that aren't coming on, another half a turn. The ones that then... You might find that that one might come on absolutely perfectly, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to open it up all the way again. You know, you might get heat there, and you don't want to go and open them all back up again. Um, and then, because while you're there, it might work, but then you might get a recall because it's come back to the same issue again. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to force the heat, because otherwise the, the water and the heat will take the easiest route. So it's not going to come down here if it doesn't need to. If it's only going to stay up here and just keep recirculating around here because it's the easiest thing to do you have to make it go down there. So you're going to need to close all the lock shield sides, whichever size they are, and then open them back up half a turn each. And then work your way back around it. Some of them might be all right on half a turn. Like I found a couple of the radiators today were absolutely perfect on half a turn. Uh, that was the flow inlet to it, and it was absolutely perfect for it. So left them alone. And then other ones, I just opened it a little bit more. I probably got to about a turn and a half on a couple of them uh, to, you know, uh, to get it to a good temperature. And then once I've done that, you know, and it was, and even the one downstairs was still absolutely piping hot. So just wanted to give you a brief idea of what I do, and that that's that's how I get get by. Um, I think it's it, it, the simplest way of doing it as well is, uh, so, you know, I've, I've seen other videos where it gets very very complicated. I literally just go and shut them all down, send it to the one I want it to, and then I work my way back around the system, half turn, half turn everywhere, and then go. 
back again and fine tune it after that. So it takes a little bit of time, um, but it, you get the end result. So I hope that's helped someone. Um, that's just how I've learned uh, to do it myself and, it, and it's worked. I've never had any problems. So I hope it helps someone.